Greetings fellow programmers, this is Pavel and this is part two of our inventory management program that we are coding in Visual Basic. Uh, so in the previous video we created the connection to our database and created our uh, data set with table adapters for the three of our tables that we will be using. And in this video I'm going to start uh, coding and I'll start with the out of stock items. So when I double click it, the event is created. And in order for me to get the items that are out of stock, I need to basically subtract the current orders from what was in the inventory at the beginning of the day. So let's say there were 10 computers uh, in the inventory at the beginning of the day and five orders for the, those computers, then there would be five computers left, obviously. So in order to do that, we need to basically join two tables the inventory table and the orders table. So I'm going to do that by using the query uh, uh, in link. So dim, I'll just name it query. And it's gonna be uh, from inventory in microland data set dot inventory. And like I said, we have to join the tables with orders, order tables. So I'll just name it order in microland.orders. And we are joining these tables on the IDs, the, uh, the item IDs. So we are joining them on the inventory, uh, on inventory.item uh, ID. equals the order dot item ID right here all right and um, I'm gonna name it uh, I'll just do let uh, current quantity which is just a, I'm creating a variable of integer that will hold the inventory quantity inventory dot quantity so which is going to be passed to our current quantity variable right in this uh, uh, query and now we have to do some kind of uh, where statement we have to uh, specify the condition and the condition to find what is uh, needed to be reordered or what is out of stock is basically when the quantity is zero or less if there were orders for a uh, uh, made today and we have to reorder uh, the items to even satisfy those orders so there actually could be uh, the quantity could be less than zero in this case so where our current quantity is less or equal to zero in so when our current quantity is meeting this condition we need to reorder and we will return or select uh, the ID of the item. So we will select inventory that item ID. We will also select the inventory that description because we want to output a, not just the code for the for the item. We also want to know what it actually is. So that's the description and the current quantity, which is uh, the variable I created here with the let statement. And uh, we can do distinct because uh, if in case there are, you know, multiple people can order the same item, so it will return the same thing. So that's why we can use the distinct so now we have our query, it returns uh, all the items that need to be reordered. So now we can output it to our list box. So list box output dot items dot add. And we can do here are the items that are out of inventory or out of stock, whatever you want to name it. Out of inventory or must be reordered 
and here we will simply output uh, well before we do that let's just output a blank line so there's some separation so it's not all crowded together so we will add a blank line and uh, we will also output the list output dot items dot add and um, so this is basically just a header you know before we output the actual numbers so we will output here uh, the numbers shown give the minimum reorder quantity so basically it tells us what what is uh, required to uh, reorder so again if you had 10 computers and 11 were orders we need to reorder at least one more uh, in order to satisfy the current orders so quantity uh, what do you want uh, required okay so um, uh, i will add another empty line here just so it's a little bit of formatting but uh, now let's output the actual items so we will do a for each loop i'll just call it element in our query here so we are looping through our query and in it we will simply add each of the items that are returned in our select statement to our list box so list output dot items dot add and we can do the element dot item id and a space and then we can do um, the current quantity uh, so we will do element dot current quantity and another space and finally we can do the description of the item so we know what it what it is that we are actually uh, ordering so we will do the element that description okay so um, yeah I can even test it right now let's run it let's see if we have any bugs if it compiles well it opens so if I click out of stocks and it just uh, well, first of all, let me make this bigger because I cannot even read that. But uh, it clearly did not output anything into our list box. It only output the uh, the header. Okay, so there's some problem here where we have. And it seems it just doesn't output anything because it uh, assumes that everything is in order. In other words, that there's enough items. So I have current quantity, which is, um, it cannot equal the, <laughs> all right, I have the current quantity set to equal to inventory quantity. But it's not, the current quantity is the inventory quantity minus uh, the quantity that we uh, that was being shipped today or ordered today so uh, first uh, I have to calculate actually what uh, was ordered today the quantities that were ordered today and then I subtract those from the inventory quantity here so uh, I'm going to create a function I will do public function I'll call it calcu uh, calculate final quantity and um, it will get the we, we need to know what uh, the item is so we need to actually pass the ID or some kind of uh, identifier for the items that is being uh, calculated and ID is the ideal thing to, for that it will return an integer it will return the final quantity so um, over here I'm going to create a total as integer 
because we are calculating quantity, so we don't need double. It will always be uh, whole numbers or an integer. And I'm going to run another query. Uh, and it's going to be from the from order again in the micro and data set that orders uh, where remember there's three tables uh, the orders uh, hold the orders uh, for for today so we can simply do where the order that item ID the order that item ID equals the ID that is being passed as an argument. If they equal, that means that that item was ordered or there was an order for it today. So we will select the order that quantity as a return. And uh, so this will give us uh, all the orders of all the items uh, that today. So we can do another for each loop. Yeah, I'll just call it order as integer in our query. And in it, we will simply do the total plus equals order. We, we sum it up all into our total uh, variable over here. So again, this query simply uh, finds all the orders for all the items it doesn't care what item it is it just uh, it just wants to know the total orders um, for that item that is uh, being passed as an id so that will be passed from our query over here so one item at a time is calculated and returned the total orders for that item all right so we will return total so when i come here to our out of stock I can now go to our inventory quantity and I can now subtract the uh, the number of items or the, the quantity of the item that is being currently queried uh, from our inventory quantity. So I will do minus and I will simply call the, the function. So uh, minus calculate quantity and it expects the ID and we have the ID right here we have uh, we know the ID is the the order that item ID so this ID is passed as an uh, argument and this query over here will return if there were any orders for that item it will return how many of those were ordered and we subtract them from the inventory quantity that uh, that the item had at the beginning of the day so uh, let's see if we can uh, we can run this so if I come over here and click out of stock now we get the the quantity uh, and it returns well it returns minus two meaning that we have to actually we are minus two <laughs> is uh, meaning that th th we need to order at least two items that we are short two items or minus five the same thing so um, and zero simply means that there were ten of these items MS office upgrade and ten were ordered so now we have zero left this means that let's say there were ten items uh, of this uh, Kurzweil voice uh, item and 12 were ordered so now we are too short and this means that we are five short so um we can uh, in order to avoid these negative numbers because we, we just want to know the number shown should give the minimum reorder quantity required and we cannot really order minus two right so uh, what are we gonna do to avoid having the negative numbers we're going to use the uh math that abs which means the we will simply do it in the absolute numbers so when we are adding the number here you now the current quantity uh we will place that into our 
math.abs. That should uh, that should give us just the positive numbers. So it will tell us how many are needed to be ordered. The minimum. So now it says we need to order two of these into five of these. It says we have to, uh, you know, minimum reorder is zero because we are currently uh, at zero. So technically we don't need it because there is no order for it right now. But if there is one in the future, then uh, we won't be able to fulfill it right away because we have only, we have now no items uh, left in the inventory. All right. So this seems to be working fine now. So, um, in the next video, we will take care of the displaying the bills for today's orders. So stick around and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.